Globally, we have encountered so many issues over the years, and certainly today is no different. The situation in China continues to unfold with new information coming out each day. Economically, we are watching a desperate need to keep everything moving, and this has been active on all fronts. It doesn't seem to be letting up, and unfortunately, this cannot be resolved by printing more money and buying stocks through subsidiaries. It simply will not fix anything. That won't stop them from doing it, however. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to have our focus on China. I also want to discuss what's going on in Japan right now. I want to talk about Jeff Bezos even if I have time at the end. But to start the video, I wanted to look at this. January 2020, stimulus isn't working. The longest expansion ever. Right now, you hear about how fantastic the economy is because it is, in fact, the longest expansion ever. Now, that sounds fantastic, except when you see this. It's the weakest expansion ever. And what does that tell you about what they have told us and what they keep trying to push down our throats? It might be hard to see. I know the font is quite small, but basically, we're looking at the 1940s and then you go through all of these years to see the level of expansion and you can see something very clear. There is a downward trend. We're printing more money than ever before and yet we're getting less out of the deal. That doesn't sound so good, does it? So even though we've had such a long expansion, it is very weak. Now what does that tell you? What's different from this time frame from let's say the 50s and onward up until let's say 2000 and from 2000 up until until the present. Well, there is something very clear. Now, while we have seen the stock market rising considerably, we have watched the economy growing at a weaker pace. It is very clear to me, and I know to you as well, that printing money never ever resolves any of the underlying issues. This is just a relevant example of what we're seeing today, but of course there have been so many of these before Pier 1 files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Now I know that the excuse that we always see is the fact that Amazon is destroying all of these different stores. I don't think Pier 1 is in any way a competitor to what we're seeing on Amazon. Amazon generally you do not find very large products on there unless they're sold fulfilled by merchant FBM and that means that people have to generally really wait relatively long periods of time to get their items shipped. They will not be stored in the fulfillment centers of Amazon. Consumers on Amazon generally like to get the prime shipping. They can get that in one or two days. They're buying items that are usually quite small because the fees that Amazon charges, of course, based on the weight and the size, do come up to a lot. So it's actually much better for some of these other companies to deal with the larger items. That's a whole different story. But we're seeing this in all different industries. It's not just retail. It's not just clothing. It's not just home decor. We're seeing this all across the board. Automotive sector is one example I've been covering over the last few days as well. I don't know if you've seen this already, but where was this brought up in the mainstream media? This should have been front page news. Everybody should have been talking about it, but I've been trying to give you the real deal on what's happening with the trade deal and I've been taking some flack for it. That's okay. I'm willing to, if you're willing to listen, and I know you are, you're one of my subscribers, and I wanna thank you for that. Phase one trade deal ambiguity gives China ample room for delays. So you know the drill, the whole trade deal was supposed to go through it took forever to happen then we finally get this thing called a phase one trade deal that was signed not even by the emperor in china but by the premier if i'm not mistaken there's this massive set of question marks around how much agriculture they are actually gonna buy in that trade deal they do mention a bunch of other things that were key components of what they wanted to get a hold of but it doesn't really enforce anything and it's not specific enough that's why they call it a phase one deal. But of course, it isn't an actual deal per se. It's just getting the stuff on paper. Now that made the markets happy and that's fantastic. It's a sign that both sides are willing to at least come to terms with what's written on the paper. But we got a problem here. Because of the situation going on, they can push this back even further. Now, how should the markets be trading this? Well, of course, they just ignore it. That's right, because it's already 
priced in. Once it's priced into the market, they forget about it. If it's bad news, there's no way they're going to be able to trade on it. They only want it to go up. So all bad news is ignored. The only time bad news is included is when it would result in the Federal Reserve printing more money. This is just a chart that corresponds U.S. goods export to China realistic. What we've seen over the last few years compared to what's been written in that phase one trade deal is two very different things. So it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't meet what we were being told was going to happen. But Of course, we'll see what happens in time. Nearly half of the U.S. companies in China say that their global operations are already seeing an impact from business shutdowns. Some 78% of the respondents also said that they do not have sufficient staff at their Chinese plants to resume full production. So there is a certain set of information that we know coming from mainstream sources, mainstream channels, maybe it's the government, maybe it's state-backed media, whatever it might be, we can take that information in. And we have alternative sources. And we have the anecdotal information, stuff I've covered over the last few days. This right here is important because it's going to tell you what's really going on. If they don't have sufficient staff, if the businesses simply aren't at full capacity right now when they should be, you know something is up. At the beginning of the year, as I've said on the other videos, it's normal for there to be a slowdown, but it shouldn't persist up until the point we have right here. So if this goes into March and we're still looking at the same set of data you know something is definitely not going right and they can't fix it really quickly at the very bottom 48 percent of respondents said that plant shutdowns have already impacted their global supply chains while almost all others expect an impact within the next month this is not comprehensive of course we're not looking at every single factory every part of the entire country no but it gives us an idea of what's going on the global supply chain is how highly reliant on what's going on inside of China. Now you think about this, they're the biggest consumer of so many different things. Industrial commodities and everything else are just gobbled up by China. At the same time, China produces so much of what the world needs. We keep hearing about how, you know, we can change that, we can get rid of that. Well, right now, that's not really the case. This will definitely be a major factor going forward. This article out of Bloomberg is talking about China's highest flying technology startups having trouble with venture capital funding. I'll show you a chart in just a second, but I wanted to cover a point from here. Investment in an industry that runs on face-to-face -face contact and gut instinct has fallen off a cliff since January. Venture capital funds slash startup investment by 60% in January from a year ago. So this is something that we can see having a major impact down the line as well. Chinese VC funding for startups dropped 60% year over year in January. There's the data there for yourself and another chart that corresponds to that. We can see the comparison in VC funding and how during the dot-com bubble, there was this huge run up. There was so much money flooding in to these different startups that had nothing more than an idea. And we know what happened afterwards. We're looking at a similar instance today, not as extreme, but as soon as we work had their challenges, let's call them, we've noticed this big drop off in the amount of money that's flowing through. People are not necessarily too excited to put their money into something that they're unsure of at this moment. Instead, they're going to the Amazons and the Apples and so on. China's home developer Evergrande offers 25% off. Now, this isn't clothing. This isn't some retail store giving you a discount. We're talking about houses with a 25% off discount. Where have you ever seen that before? We've seen incentives. We've seen all kinds of strange incentives. I've shown you some on the channel. But a 25% off coupon, this is an industry being hit very hard right now. Maybe you could say that the prices should never have been in where they were and if they cut the price 25% that's more reasonable I don't know about exactly where this has been moving but I'll tell you right now 25% off discount not very typical 
Property transaction volume stayed low in early February, and you know exactly why. The red line being 2020, comparing that to the last few years. Yes, you would see some period of time where there wouldn't be any transactions. This is their new year, this is a slowdown, but it comes back. Instead, in this instance, we see that it has basically been flat, moving up somewhat, but nowhere near where it's supposed to be. We turn the page over to what's happening with Japan. Following a dismal final quarter of 2019, Japan's economy is facing the risk of recession because of what's going on inside of China. It's hurting tourism and production. What Germany's central bank called on the government in Berlin to use its surplus to support growth as a broader danger of slowdown builds. They talk about Singapore in here. They talk about other countries in this article. If you really want to know what's happening related to this, this particular Wall Street Journal article will be with all the others in the description under the sources i would recommend it they want to blame one thing or another in every situation the government does it the mainstream media does it as well they can't admit that there's a global economic slowdown that's going on right now we're not waiting for it to happen as if it's a future event it's happening today it's happening right now Here's that article just saying Japan's economy shrinks 6.3% as sales tax increase cools consumption. What do you think it's going to do? Why in the world would they have done this thinking that it was actually going to make things better? Well, anyway, there's the chart. You could see that we haven't seen this in several years inside of China. So we're going to look at whether this persists into the next quarter. And of course, I will give you the numbers when I can. Really quickly, you may have seen this in the news, basically Jeff Bezos, he's starting something called the Bezos Earth Fund. And if you scroll down here, he's saying, I'm committing $10 billion to start and will begin issuing grants this summer. What I found interesting was that in this case here, now I don't know exactly what all the fine print is. I have no idea. I'm sure we'll find out in the next little while, but there's so many of these different funds out there that say, you know, we are investing in these ESG, environmental, social, and so on. But then you actually look at their holdings. It's it's nothing like that. The top 10 holdings for ESGG make up 27% of the fund's total holdings. And what do we have in here? In this particular example, I'm not saying that necessarily this is what Bezos is starting to set up, but wouldn't it be interesting if it's something similar to this, where we have Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon, of course, with Alphabet and all the others in here, making up a significant percentage of that particular fund, in this case, 5%. So Bezos puts in the $10 billion and he gets everybody else, central banks, hedge funds, investment companies to add on top of that 10 billion. Indirectly, they're investing in Amazon. And what does that do to the stock? It makes it go up higher and thereby making his wealth go even higher. I'm not saying this is what happens. I'm not predicting the future. I don't know the fine print, like I said, but I just wanted to plant this seed right now and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna end it there. If you found it informative, hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna support me, you just gotta click that one button. For those that watch the advertisements at the beginning of this video, I wanna thank you for that. It really does help. If you want to learn about e-commerce, if you want to understand online sales, I've created a free, 100% free e-course, the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to understand the financial system, everything from the foundation, the history, the asset classes, all those details are located in these two books. They fit into each other like a lock and key. Definitely check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook, MoneyGPS.com. I've been covering everything to do with China right now, getting into all the details you need to know. This video is jam-packed. It's going to cover everything up to date. Click on it. I'll see you there.